Today, we're going to be creating this particular nebula shader that you can use on objects or even as the background for any of your sci-fi renders. It's going to be EV compatible, so it'll render really fast and will not require any type of volumetrics. I searched for this for a while, but couldn't find any, so I decided to make my own. With that, let's figure out how we can build this. In our default scene, we'll tap X and delete the default cube because we're going to initially create all of this on a sphere. So we'll press Shift A, search for a mesh UV sphere, and then press Control 5 tab in the subdivision surface of level 5. Then we'll press this object button button and click shade smooth and scale it up by pressing S3 to just scale it up by three units on all the axes. Now we can start off with the actual materials. So let's bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to the left to create a new window and change this from the 3D viewport to the shader editor. Once you have that, you can tap N to remove the side panel and press this button to create a new material, or you can select the default material and then change the name to nebula or whatever you want. Then to actually see the changes update, we're gonna change the viewport shading from solid to rendered by using our scroll wheel to scroll to the side and changing this to rendered. Along with that, we'll select the default light and tap X to delete it. Now with the sphere selected, we can start off the materials. For the materials, we're gonna be using different emission shaders. So we can select the principal BSDF and tap X to delete it. Then we'll press Shift A, search for an emission node, and we can plug this into the surface. Now, obviously, we need to play around with the color to get the desired effect. So the base texture that we're going to use is a wave texture. Let's search for a wave texture and plug the color into the color. Now we get lines and I don't mind whichever axis it's on. So I'll keep it like this itself, but I don't want so many lines to be present. I just want maximum two or three. So I'll use this scale value and reduce it so that we get much fewer lines. So maybe a scale of one will be good enough. Now we need to add in some distortion to this, but if we just use the normal distortion, we don't have too much control over the size. So you see areas like this, it's completely getting disconnected, but I don't have have like a nice rough squiggle on the line which I want. So I'm not going to use this distortion. Instead, I'm going to change the vector coordinates with some noise. For that, make sure you have Node Wrangler switched on from your edit preferences, go to add-ons and search for Node Wrangler and make sure that it's checked. And then with the wave texture selected, press Ctrl T to add in a texture coordinate and mapping nodes. Then switch from generated to object so that this works on whichever object you use. So you can play around with the scale again, maybe 0.5. Next, we want to add in some noise to this. So we'll press Shift A, search for a mix color plug that in over here and essentially we want to mix in some noise so let's search for a noise texture and plug this color into socket b for the vector we can directly use the original output from the mapping so now you see if we have a factor of zero, we get just the wave texture. And if we have a factor of one, we get just the noise texture. But I like the distortion that this noise texture creates because I can actually use this scale value to get that effect that I was talking about. If I increase the scale really high, I can get a lot more distortion occurring without actually getting the main waves to get disconnected. However, I'm gonna use a scale of maybe four and I'm gonna crank up the detail to 15 and the roughness up to 0.8. Now I might play around with this a bit later, but we'll start off with this and I'll also increase the factor up to maybe 0.5 and just change this scale to 0.7. All of this is personal preference. So you have to make sure that you play around with it. Now the next thing is this is still black and white. We need to add in some color. For that we can use a color ramp before we plug into the emission node. So I'll press shift A, search for a color ramp, plug that in over here and you can choose different space colors that you please. So in this particular situation I'm going to go with a pink, purple and a blue. So let's change this black to a fairly dark pink color. Then I'll bring this slider in, change this to maybe a dark purple color. And I could have a blue slider, but I actually think I'll not use blue. I'll directly go with black. So let's control click, add in a new stop and change the color all the way to black. I'll also change this from linear to ease. And now you see you get very solid lines of these colors, but a better way to actually mix these in is by using the same wave texture with a little bit more distortion and layering that onto this as a screen, which goes into the color ramp. So I'll press shift A and search for a noise texture. And as usual, we need to add in this wave texture to the noise, but we don't want this to go in directly. We want to have control over how much of this wave texture we're using and how much of just the noise we're using. So we'll use this mix node. So press shift D and take the result from this mix node and plug that into the vector of the noise texture. Now we're mixing between the wave texture as well as the original coordinates. So let's take this and plug that into socket B and the output from the noise texture has to be layered on to this wave texture. So to layer on different colors, we can press shift A, search for a mix color, and this time change it from mix to screen. And now we can plug this color into socket B. Or in fact, since we want to layer the wave texture onto the noise, we'll actually plug the noise into socket A and plug the wave texture into socket B. And this 
looks exactly like what I wanted, where you have these really nice cloud nebula like textures with these different colors blended in. Now I think there's not much of this pink showing, so I'll start dragging the pink in, moving this to the side. And I think this sort of a distribution looks really good and it gives me that nebula like feel. But of course, it's missing something and that's stars. So let's go ahead and add in some stars. And that's going to be simply adding in another emission node alongside this original emission node. So to mix these two, we press shift A and search for a mix shader and plug that in over here. And this emission is going to go into the second shader, but we don't want this emission to be present everywhere. So we're going to use this factor to control it and to get tiny dots, which are essentially the shape of stars. We can use a Voronoi texture because the distance gives out circles. So let's just control shift click the Voronoi texture to see what we have. And you can already see the Voronoi texture, but we need to convert these to small dots. For that, we search for a color ramp node, plug that in after the Voronoi texture and start clamping these in. Now the dots are black, but I want the dots to actually be white. So I'll bring the white slider off to the other side. And now I have small white dots present. If you want to increase the number of dots, you can go ahead and increase the scale on the Voronoi texture. So if I make the scale something like 20, we get many more dots. And if you want to reduce the size of the dots, just bring this black slider in and that will reduce the size of the dots. So I think this size is good. And now you can take this output and plug it into the factor of the mix shader and plug the mix shader into the material output. That way we have these tiny dots that are emissive present inside that act as stars. Of course, we can play around with the color, but if you don't want a single color, you can press shift A, search for a Voronoi texture, and then this color socket, we can plug into a color ramp. So let's search for a color ramp, plug the color into the factor, and we'll change this from linear to constant and just add in whatever different colors you want. So let's add in another stop and we'll change this first color to maybe the pinkish color that we were using. And I don't want the stars to be too saturated, so I'll actually desaturate it a bit. The second one can be maybe purplish stars, and maybe the last one we can go with the blue stars because I wanted to add in some blue as well either way. So once you're happy with the colors, go ahead and plug this color into the color of the emission. And now you can see some of the stars are blue in color, some of them are pink in color. But if you want there to be more randomness, just go ahead and increase the scale on the Voronoi texture and you should get more randomness as well. Beyond that, I think I'm going to increase the strength as well so that they're much brighter. So let's go with a strength of 50. But to make them nice and glowing, we can go to our render properties and switch on bloom. Now you can play around with the strength to get even more bloom or even lesser bloom if you want. But this looks good enough. So if you want the stars to change over time, that'll act a little bit like the stars are twinkling. You can actually go to this Voronoi texture that we were using to go into the factor of the mix shader. Change this from 3D to 4D and play around with the W slider over time. And when you change it to 4D, you might have to play around with this slider a bit as well as the scale. So I think I'm going to have to change the scale to 40 and bring the slider back by just a little bit. So now you can change the W value to go really slow, but change with the frames by pressing hash frame by maybe 1000. And that way over time they'll change. If they're changing too fast, go ahead and add in some more zeros. And I think another zero is required. So I'm actually going hash frame by 100,000. And to actually see the speed at which it's changing, you can change the sync from play every frame to frame dropping. And now when you play it, you should get an idea of how fast or how slow they're actually changing. I don't want this to be too abrupt. So this very slow change in speed or change in stars is actually good enough for me. It's a very subtle change. And I actually like that. Maybe I'll speed it up by just by by changing this from one zero to five and that way it just becomes twice as fast. So I think that's good. The next thing that I want is for objects, the outer ring should have this type of glow to give it a more mysterious look. So to add in that glow again, it's going to be fairly simple. We're going to search for another mix shader or just duplicate this by pressing shift D and then take another emission node or shift D to duplicate this in and plug this into the shader. But for the strength, we're going to use a layer weight node and we're going to plug the facing into the strength. Now, of course, we'll need more control. So between the layer weight and the emission, we're going to search for a color ramp node. So press shift A, search for a color ramp, plug that in right here. And I'll change from linear to ease, after which I'll just slide this value in right to the edge. And for the actual edge, I'm going to change this color from a white to maybe a purplish color, which will give it that really nice hue at the end. You can always play around with the blend values as well, just to have all of this fit in correctly. And I think that looks fairly all right. If you want to reduce the strength, you can go ahead and just bring this value down in the color of the emission and that'll reduce the strength. And I think this sort of a value looks really, really good. And this is the perfect nebula shader that I was searching for. Now, in case you want to actually create this particular nebula shader as the world background, but you've already created it for an object, 
as I did the first time, a really simple thing to do is take all of these nodes and select all of them, after which you can press Control G to convert all of them into a group. Make sure that you don't select the material output while you create this particular group so that you just have all the shaders present in here. And then you can scroll over here and press this button to go back to the original Nebula material and you can see how everything was shifted into a group. Now we can change the name of this node group. So tap N and make sure that this is selected. Change the name to something like Nebula Shader. You can label it as Nebula as well. And once you're done with that, you can go to the properties and change this name as well to Nebula Shader. This properties name that you give over here is what you're going to have to call later on. So just to differentiate, we'll call this Nebula underscore Shader and then we'll tap N to hide it. And now we'll change this window from object to world so that we can play around with the world settings. Now, if you can't find the nodes, press period on your numpad to centralize the selected nodes. If nothing is selected, just tap A and then period to centralize them. Select the background node and tap X to delete it. Then press shift A, search for Nebula Shader. So you see the one with the underscores what shows up over here. So just take this and plug that into the surface. Make sure that your viewport display is on rendered. And once it's on rendered, you should be able to see the nebula that you just created present as the background for your entire world, which can be really cool as either a night sky background, or maybe you're doing a space scene, anything of that sort, any sci-fi scene will actually look really cool with this particular shader. So I was actually really, really excited to successfully create this. And I'm really happy sharing it with all of you. If you found this helpful, feel free to share this video around so that even more people can create this. And the more people create things like this, the finer they'll be able to add in more details and share it with the rest of the community so that everybody benefits. If you've watched so far into the video, thank you so much for watching. The watch time really helps me and I'm almost halfway there to monetization. So I upload videos every single day. So definitely check out other videos on my channel. And until the next video comes out tomorrow, keep creating and stay creative.